Welcome to Lecture 19 in this series of videos on statistical process improvement and statistical quality assurance. We've been talking about measurement and its statistical analysis. Talking to this point about measurement that is fundamentally quantitative. When at all possible, it's best to get quantitative measurements. Quantitative measurements typically carry far more information than do qualitative measurements, that is, yes, no, conforming, non-conforming, zero, one, go, no, go. Uh, that kind of observation is, is rarely as informative as a measurement is. But there are times that uh, engineers are called on to try to quantify repeatability and re reproducibility of zero one measure, zero one observations, go no go uh, observations. One would like to uh, separate some measure of overall inconsistency in zero one calls into pieces that can be charged to inherit inconsistency in the equipment or method and differences that can be charged to how operators use that equipment. That is, there is the notion of uh, repeatability and reproducibility uh, even for uh, qualitative observation. Uh, exactly how to do this is not particularly well established. Uh, the best statistical methodology that is available uh, is beyond what can be presented here in these modules. Uh, but what we can do is present at least a rational way of making some point estimates, not making intervals, but at least point estimates uh, of what might be termed repeatability and reproducibility components for uh, go, no go, or zero one uh, observations. Uh, that's what we're going to do in the next in these three mo next three modules. Uh, the present one, we're going to talk about the model behind uh, our methods, and then in the next one, in module uh, 20, we'll talk about a specific kind of uh, point estimate for R and R, and then we'll remind you in module. 21 of the usefulness of uh, elementary methods of estimating uh, differences in population proportions uh, and apply that to this context. So here's some simple probability modeling. Uh, to begin with, think of coding a non-conforming evaluation of an object as a 1 and a conforming evaluation of an object is a zero. Uh, and think about having J operators uh, each make M calls on a fixed object, on a fixed part. So we're going to uh, ask uh, each of some number of operators to tell us whether a part is good or bad or conforming or non-conforming. Uh, and we'll present it to them, uh, presumably with some time in between and maybe some other uh, tests in between uh, so that they don't remember what they've called it before. And we'll ask them to uh, give us then M calls on a fixed part. We're going to suppose that these operators have potentially different probabilities of calling the part non-conforming on any single viewing. And if we count up the number of times that operator J calls part uh, calls the part non-conforming, we might very well uh, think of using a binomial distribution to model that uh, count XJ. Uh, Binomial distribution, where we, where, where we allow these P's 
to vary operator to operator. In addition to that binomial modeling, we're going to assume that the P's are random draws from some population, and we're going to call the mean of that population pi. Pi is going to be a number between 0 and 1, and a variance V. Now, the quantity for operator J that is that operator's P times 1, min 1 minus that operator's P amounts to a uh, kind of per call variance associated with that operator. Why is that? Well, that's because the operator's count of number of non-conforming calls being binomial has a variance that is m times that quantity p times 1 minus p. Uh, that is, elementary probability says that the variance of xj is this. Now, what is uh, what makes this modeling and analysis somewhat difficult here is that unlike the case in usual gauge R and R for measurements, that variance uh, depends on P. It's not constant. Uh, and it's not constant, meaning if, if P changes uh, operator to operator, so does the variance. Uh, and that's somewhat uh, that's a complicating factor to this analysis. Uh, that being said, if one thinks of P varying according to this distribution that has mean uh, that we call pi and variance we call V, uh, the expected value of P times 1 minus P or PJ times 1 minus PJ is something can, that can be worked out in terms of pi and v. It's pi times 1 minus pi minus v. Uh, and one might think of calling that uh, a, a, a measure of variability that's chargeable to repeatability. Now, this thing that's getting subtracted off here, the variance of the P's, or the variance of a, of, a, of a randomly drawn operator's probability of calling an item uh, non-conforming, uh, that's an operator to operator, uh, operator variance. And so one might think of that as a reproducibility variance. So if if this whole thing is a kind of repeatability variance and it's gotten by subtracting v from pi times 1 minus pi, then it seems plausible uh, to call pi times 1 minus pi uh, a total or overall uh, or R and R variance. So what we've got thus far in this, in this discussion is that in 0-1 contexts, the thing that we're going to call the R and R variance is the mean probability of calling a item defective as one looks across operators. The uh, reproducibility is the variance of the distribution of the probabilities as one looks across operators of calling uh, a part non-conforming. And the difference is what we're going to call uh, the uh, repeatability variance. The question that we'll address in the next module is how do we take data and make estimates of those uh, variances?